What is up everybody, my name is Moose and welcome back to the Star Forge. Today we are going over how to get your first printer, what to look for, and how to start printing. So the landscape around 3D printing, especially at the entry level, has changed a ton in the last like three to five years. When I got in in 2017, it was basically buy an Ender 3, that's it. And then you just, you just modded the hell out of it. But that's not the case anymore. Clipper is like affordable in $250 printers now. Um, you know, the, you can get so much performance for so cheap now that there are so many different places to enter 3D printing. Um, so I think the first and most important thing, if you are a prospective 3D printer purchaser, is deciding what you want to print. You could be printing cosplay stuff. You could be printing, you know, product prototyping. You could be doing just fun little trinkets, whatever it may be. That is going to be step number one because that will dictate how big of a printer you need and what features you need to be looking for. Um, and then you also, another thing to think about, are you printing miniatures? Are you going to want a resin printer versus an FDM printer? Do you care about speed or quality? That's another thing to consider. Um, there is a ton of pros and cons to both. Um, I would say real like quickly, resin, slower, messier, higher quality. Um, like much, much, much higher quality, um, FDM faster, better for prototyping, but you're a little limited by the hardware, by how much or what resolutions you can print at. Um, I personally use FDM for most of my stuff, but I use resin for my smaller stuff. I need more detail on it absolutely has its own place. Even just if you're starting printing. So once you've decided what you want to print, um, there are a ton of good articles online that help you find what size is ideal for you. I would say rule of thumb, if you're going to be doing cosplay stuff or, you know, things you're going to wear or you think you might do cosplay stuff, get a mid to large size printer. So that's going to be anything where the build plate is 300 by 300 by whatever the build height is, usually like 350 to 400 ish. Um, that's your mid to large size. And if you're doing like prototyping or little trinkets, you can probably start with the standard like 240 by two or 220 by 220 by whatever the height may be. Um, and then resin. That's a whole different ballpark. Those are typically much smaller. Even a large resin printer is usually not even close to the size of a large FDM printer. So that will need um, more investigation. I personally just have a small one for my little thing, so I don't know as much about the ideal build sizes for what. And then the next thing you're going to do once you figured out what size printer you need is watch YouTube to, uh, reviews. I am not a reviewer but I do have some that I go and watch all the time. Um, Fauxhammer, F-A-U-X, is awesome for resin printer reviews. He does a ton of comparisons and reviews. It's, it's awesome. I love his videos. Um, Maker's Muse, he does a lot of FDM printer reviews and comparisons. He's great. And then one guy I look at when I'm trying to find new filaments is Voidstar Labs. He does crazy experiments with filaments, but some of them are actually very helpful to see what kind of stuff you might want to try. So there's many, many, many more amazing reviewers. Those are just my personal favorites, but just do your research, watch comparison videos, watch unboxings and first uh, impressions, um, watch people tuning them and dialing them and what settings they found and what bugs they found. Cause every printer is going to have the pros and cons. It's going to have some bugs out of the box, something you got to adjust on your own. And that's okay. That's part of the hobby. There are some printers you can pay more, and it'll have no issues. And maybe you just want to set it and forget it. Go look at those, like a, like a bamboo or a Prusa. It is all down to your preference and what you are looking for, as well as your budget. But there is a printer for everyone, no matter what. So once you have made your decision, you got your printer, how are you going to use it? Well, let's take a look at getting your printer set up and running. So you've ordered your printer, it's come in, and now you got it. The day is here. What do you do now? Um, a lot of people will make the mistake of just starting to print the prints on the USB, and then it won't work, and they'll wonder why and get super frustrated. Um, and there are tons of videos um, that go in-depth on how to get your printer set up, depending on what printer you got. But the general rule of thumb for, you know, once you have built the printer, it turns on, it's ready to go. First thing, level it. Whether you have manual leveling or auto bed leveling, get it level. That is the most important thing for a printer to function properly. 
um, get it level. The next thing you want to do is maybe print one of the prints that came on the USB it came with. This is probably the only thing it's good for. Um, or go get like a Benchy or some simple small test print that you can do fairly quickly and that doesn't use a ton of filament. You don't want to go straight to torture tests because those usually take a lot longer and use a lot more filament. And when you're just getting the settings, you know, you're tweaking things. Um, you don't want to do those because they're going to waste a lot of filament and waste a lot of time. Um, so, you know, you can do, you can do the all in one test. Like I featured in my Elegoo, um, uh, filament test video, you can do temp towers to figure out the best temperature for your printer. You can do stringing towers to figure out what retraction you need, all that kind of stuff. And then once you kind of get it where you think it's pretty good, you can do stuff like this torture toaster. Um, this is, it has a bunch of different tolerances. So it has like tolerance tests, it has overhang tests, and then obviously, you know, the toast pops. So that's always fun. But um, I would say start with something like a Benchy, um, something small. This usually takes like 30 to 45 minutes on newer printers with clipper on them. Um, and that way you're not wasting a ton of time waiting for prints to finish just so you can change a few settings. Um, one other thing, these are just things that I think make um, printing a lot easier. Um, I personally on all my printers have a smart camera and a smart plug on them. Um, now some printers like the, the K1C, the P1P, um, these newer enclosed Core XY printers, they have cameras and stuff built into them. So does the Anchor Make M5, I think, where if it detects a failure, it'll stop it automatically. But a lot of printers, especially if you're trying to get in at a lower price point, they don't have that. So I put a USB camera, or sorry, a, a smart camera and a smart plug on all my printers so that periodically throughout the day, I can check on my printers. And then if I see a one failed, I can just shut it off remotely. No more wasted filament, no more wasted um, power and heat and all that kind of stuff. So I think personally, those are must haves for me um, is remote control of my printers. So now you've got it dialed in, you've got it locked in, it's printing good. What else are you gonna print? If you're one of those people who got a printer just because you think they're neat, which is awesome, but you don't really know what to print, um, thangs.com is probably where I go for all of the, the first place I go when I need to find something, if whether it's a technical part or I just want to print something kind of small and for fun. Um, if you're looking for, um, more, sometimes more high quality files that people might charge for cult 3d is a great place. Etsy has a lot of great, um, 3d files on there. Um, I am affiliated, uh, with galactic armory who does a ton of awesome halo and hell divers and star Wars cosplay and weapons and stuff. His files are always super high quality and usually optimized for um, smaller printers because he has pre-cut versions. But he also just has a ton of nice things that are good for being printed rather than cast. Um, so like notches that pieces can go together, all that good stuff. Um, that's something to look for when you're looking at files. Some people will just rip files from like a game and then boom, try to print those. And it doesn't always work great because those files are made for a game, not a printer. So... Make sure your files, if you're paying for them, have those quality of life things just to make it easier for yourself in the end. So now that you have, you know, your first print done, you've printed your little benchy, you've printed your torture tests. Now you have to dial in the printer to get the most perfect prints or not. It's really up to you, but I personally like to get the most perfect prints I can. So the first thing you got to look at, there are a few settings that are really important that you're going to want to tinker with. Um, the first of which, and this is probably a little obvious, layer height. So this is how thick each layer of the print is. And if you're wanting to print faster, you can go with a bigger layer height as, you know, it'll take up more space per pass. Or if you want something more finely detailed, you go with a lower layer height and it'll get more precise details um, on the print. Um, the next big one is your temperature um, for both your, your nozzle and your bed. Um, it can really affect the final finish of your print. You know, if you're printing too hot or too low, um, it can affect how the, it's going to look and feel from the outside when it's done. So doing stuff like temperature towers is really good for really locking that into where you want it printing. Next one is going to be print speed. Pretty self-explanatory. This is just how fast it moves as it's printing. Um, you can look at both print speed and also movement speed. Movement speed is how fast it'll move when it is not printing and going to the next location. Um, both of these can have a big, big effect on your final print time, as well as your print quality, obviously. Um, and the other one in this same family is Z-Hop. So this is when it, when it is going to move, it will hop up a little bit to avoid hitting things. 
Sometimes you don't need this at all. If you're printing something low or very big and flat, you don't really need Z-Hop. But if you're printing something taller or with supports that you don't want to get knocked over, it's helpful to have just a teeny bit of Z-Hop so that it will move without hitting or dragging anything over with it. There's also lots of different filaments to consider. PLA is what most people start with and what most people print with regularly. But you can use PETG, you can use ASA, you can use TPU. And these are all acronyms that mean very scientific things, I'm sure, but no one really cares about that part. What you really care about is what they're used for. So PLA is your good go-to, does what you need it to, and prints an object. If you're wanting something that's going to be a little more durable, a little more heat resistant, but still easy to print, you can use PETG. If you want something that is going to be squishy or flexible, uh, TPU is going to be what you want to go for. And if you're wanting something that's going to be outside, in the sun, very, very durable, um, you can use something like ASA, although there are some fumes with that, so make sure you do your research before you just dive into that. Now, there are lots of common defects you're going to run into when you are doing your prints, one of which uh, that happens to me a lot with these printers is layer shifting. So this is when um, part of the print, as it's going up a layer, it, it shifts, it, it misses a few clicks on the extruder or the belt, and now it's printing not where it should be. It, it, the whole print has shifted. Um, that usually is either a too loose or too tight belt, or maybe some unlubricated Z or, uh, linear rods. So that's something to look into if you're seeing a lot of layer shift. If your prints are warping or peeling up off the bed at the first layer, you are either cooling too much, your bed isn't leveled, um, your bed isn't hot enough, um, you could be too close to the bed in terms of your Z offset. There's a lot of things that, be, that could be causing that. Um, you could also try adding a brim. If you're looking at um, angular corners, adding a brim can help those stick down a little better. Um, but the, the, the number one thing is uh, re-leveling your bed and adjusting your Z offset. One last thing that I don't think enough people really talk about is replacing the medium that you are transferring files to your printer with. A lot of printers come with these little cheap little one gigabyte USB drives with the branding of where you're buying it from on it. And it works for the prints that come on them, but if you're trying to put, you know, prints that are a couple hundred megabytes on there, I have had so many times something corrupt in here and it causes it causes a layer shift, not because anything's loose, but because it, the coordinates got messed up. It causes the print to just stop completely. The it'll it'll stop parsing the code and it'll just fail. These things are junk. Instead, Get yourself one of these or just any reputable USB drive. This is a SanDisk. It is a little 8 gigabyte flash drive. I think I got a pack of four of these for like 20 bucks. Just get yourself anything from an actual company. Not some nameless, you know, like generic USB off Amazon. Get something SanDisk, WD, something that has a name and a company attached to it. These have solved so many problems that I was going crazy trying to figure out. And it all turns out it was just little issues caused by the USB. So if you are at the point where you've re-leveled, you've adjusted belts, you've changed your nozzle, you've done everything you can think of, check your USB. That is more often than not the last case uh, issue rather than something weird like a motherboard or a power supply. Always check the USB. That, that is my, my last tiny piece of advice that I never really saw when I was getting into printing. And it caused me a ton of headache. And if I can prevent that for somebody else, I think that would be awesome. So that is going to wrap up our intro to 3D printing. I really hope you guys found something helpful in this video. Something that you can take away and start your 3D printing journey with. If you have anything else that you think I missed or that you wish you had seen when you started printing, please put it in the comments. Um, I love seeing what other people have experienced, what other people have tried. I think it really just helps build a good collective of knowledge. So drop that down below. Let me know what printer you're thinking about buying. Uh, I'm always curious to see what people are getting into the hobby with. So thank you guys. Have a good one. We will see you next time.